two truths and a lie, but with math. Can you spot the fake? First, 6 over pi squared is the probability of two random numbers being co-prime, which means having no common factors. For example, 3 and 8 are co-prime, but 4 and 6 are not, since they're both divisible by 2. Second, a donut's volume and surface area formula also have pi squared in it, which is weird because you almost never see that. Third, the formula for the circumference of an ellipse has pi in the denominator. That was all three facts. Pause here to lock in your guess. I made up the third fact. This formula is completely wrong. You can tell because circles are also ellipses and they don't have pi in the denominator. What's interesting is that there isn't any formula for the circumference of an ellipse. You need to use approximations. As for the first two facts, the second one is true because there are two circles in a donut. One is the cross section and the other is the donut itself, and each of those two circles contributes one pi to the formula, so you get pi squared. If you have studied calculus, think of the donut as a solid of revolution. The first connection is a lot more complicated, but it has to do with the zeta function, which relates pi to number theory. Two truths and a lie, but with math. Can you spot the fake? First, you can tie a knot into a regular pentagon. All you need is a strip of paper and some patience. Second, it's impossible to draw a fully connected star with an even number of vertices. They just end up being several different polygons within each other. Third, spheres are the worst shape to pack with. What I mean by that is if you stack up a bunch of spheres, they leave a lot of space in between, more space than any other shape as far as we know. Now that you've seen all three facts, take a moment to think about which one you think is false. The fake fact is the second one. Let's see why. We'll try to make a 12-pointed star. Let's put down the vertices beforehand. Now we make edges, and we'll start at 0 for simplicity. We could connect 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and so on, but this isn't a star. So instead of adding 1 at a time, how about adding 2? We connect 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and so on, but some vertices get left out. Same thing happens with adding 3 or 4. We can see why by renaming this vertex to 12. Since 12 is divisible by 2, 3, and 4, we return to the beginning before we can get to every vertex. But 12 isn't divisible by 5, and we see that 5 works, and we get a 12-pointed star. Two truths and a lie, but with math, can you spot the fake? First, the sum of any two square roots equals the reciprocal of the difference. Second, if I give you two intersecting line segments, the area of this enclosed quadrilateral will always remain the same no matter how much you slide the lines around. Third, this infinite sequence of numbers has the property that if you square root it, you'll get your original number back hidden within the decimal. Now that you've seen all three facts, take a moment to think about which one is false. The second fact is true. We can see this by cleverly splitting the quadrilateral into two triangles. These triangles share this base, whose length remains constant no matter what, and the combined height of these two triangles remains constant as well. Since both base and height are constant, so is the area. The third fact is also true. All those numbers come from this expression, which has the special property of being exactly 0.2 less than its square root. So when you take the square root of these, you're basically only adding some form of 0.2, leaving the original number intact. This means the first fact is fake. I cherry pick those numbers. The fact is only true when a minus b equals 1. Two truths and a lie, but with math. Can you spot the fake? First, if you're really bad at cutting pizzas, don't worry. The pizza theorem ensures that these four slices have the same area as the other four slices, provided you made your cuts with equal angles. Second fact, not only is the area the same, but the amount of crust is as well. By crust, I just mean the circumference, without any thickness. Third fact, if you have a shape with equal area faces, it has equal probability of landing on each face when you roll it like a dice. Pause now to think about which one is fake. The second fact is true. To see why, we focus on two opposite slices. This angle is 45 degrees, meaning the sum of these two arcs is double that, 90 degrees. The same can be said over here, so a total of 180 degrees. Repeat the process for the remaining four slices, and we get 180 degrees again, the same amount of crust. The first fact is also true, but the proof is a lot more complicated. This means the third fact is false. A great way to see why is to consider an extreme case, which in general is a good strategy for math. The probability of this shape landing upright is ridiculously low compared to landing on one of the side faces, so we see that the probability distribution for dice depends not just on the area of each face, but also on how the faces are positioned. Two truths and a lie, but with math. Can you spot the fake? First, if you keep going down Pascal's triangle, the numbers approach a normal distribution, like on IQ charts. Speaking of normal distributions, if you add two bell curves together, you'll get another one. For example, if you randomly find two people and add their IQs together, the distribution will still be a bell curve. Last fact, if instead of adding the IQs together, you multiply them, the distribution will still remain a bell curve. Pause now to think about which fact is fake. The first one is true. In fact, this is how the normal distribution was first discovered. De Moivre was studying coin flips, and he noticed that as the number of trials increased, the distribution approached this bell curve. The second fact is also true, but the third one is false. Let's simplify things to find out why. We'll make it so that there are only three possible IQs, 80, 100, and 120, with 100 being more common. So this is our IQ distribution. Now if we add two random IQs together, our possible outcomes are 160, 180, 200, 220, and 240, which is very symmetric. But if we multiply, our results become skewed, because multiplication makes big numbers very big, but small numbers only a little bit small.